Hello learners, a very good day to all. I am Dr. Vishal Sooth, teacher educator. In the previous lessons, we have discussed about continuous and comprehensive evaluation. In those lessons, we have discussed about the features of CCE, why CCE or continuous and comprehensive evaluation is required in schools, is needed in the schools, what are the objectives of continuous and comprehensive evaluation and what aspects or what areas are covered in continuous and comprehensive evaluation. Today, we are going to discuss on the same topic that is continuous and comprehensive evaluation and what tools and techniques can be employed by the teachers to make continuous and comprehensive evaluation an integral part of teaching learning process. So our today's lesson will focus on the tools and techniques related to continuous and comprehensive evaluation. Now, what will be the framework of today's discussion? You can see on the screen that today's framework of discussion will be in the beginning, we will discuss about the CCE, what we mean by continuous and comprehensive evaluation and what we mean by formative and summative assessment regarding which we have already discussed in the previous lessons. Then we will move ahead towards the discussion on kinds of formative assessment tools. What are the different kinds of formative assessment tools available with the teachers so that they can carry out the assessment or evaluation of the students on a regular basis, on a periodic basis. Then we will discuss on the kinds of formative assessment techniques. What techniques are available with the teachers to make formative assessment a part of the teaching learning process. Then we will discuss or we will identify the summative assessment tools how summative assessment can be used by the teacher or what tools are available with the teacher to carry out summative assessment in the schools. And in the last, we will have a brief description about various assessment tools and techniques in formative assessment as well as in summative assessment. So our today's discussion will focus on these main points. Now, first of all, what we mean by continuous and comprehensive evaluation. You can see on the screen that continuous and comprehensive evaluation is a process of ensuring learning performance of the students through both formative and summative evaluation in different areas such as cognitive, affective, and psychomotor to promote all-round development of the students. That means continuous and comprehensive evaluation is carried out to ensure the learning among the students, to enhance learning among the students, to identify their learning difficulties, to provide them remedial instruction or to provide them feedback on their performance. This, these are the main focus of the continuous and comprehensive evaluation and why this is done, why learning enhancement is done, that is to promote all round development of the students. That means the main aim of continuous and comprehensive evaluation is to promote all round development of the students by enhancing or ensuring their learning performance. And in order to ensure this learning performance among the students, both formative as well as summative evaluations are employed by the teacher. That means we carry out the evaluation of the student on regular basis at short intervals after teaching learning of a smaller concept and at different period points of time. That is formative evaluation that is on continual basis and summative evaluation which is carried out at the end of the unit or at the end of the course or at the end of the session. And 
another feature of cce is that all the areas of child personality all the dimensions of child's personality that is cognitive affective and psychomotor domains of child's personality are covered in continuous and comprehensive evaluation that means cce is to ensure the learning performance to ensure or to promote all round development of the students and for that formative and summative evaluation is carried out not only in the scholastic areas not only in the subject related areas but also in co scholastic areas or in other words we can say the evaluation in cognitive affective and psychomotor aspects of child personality so this is cce continuous and comprehensive evaluation assessment in different areas on a continual basis on a regular basis then what we mean by formative and summative assessment this about this we have already studied in previous lessons but let us have a recapitulation formative assessment is a range of formal and informal assessment procedures employed by the teachers during the learning process in order to modify teaching and learning activities and to improve student attainment that means in formative assessment what as a teacher you can do you can apply different formal and informal assessment procedures that means you may use tests you may use oral questions you may observe the students in different circumstances or in different situations during the learning process or within the classroom or outside the classroom and why you do this why you take the test why you ask questions from the students why you observe the students that is to modify the teaching learning activities to find out whether the teaching learning process is moving ahead in a proper manner whether the teaching learning process is achieving its conceptualized objectives or not and whether the student attainment is improved or not whether the learning performance of the students is improved or not that means formative assessment is assessment for learning to improve learning among the students and on the other hand you have also learned that summative assessment which is carried out at the end of the course at the end of the unit at the end of the session and that refers to the assessment of learning that sums or summarizes the development of students at a particular time that means either at the end of the course either at the end of the unit or at the end of the session that means at the completion of a session you evaluate the student you assess the student and it is a process of assessing and grading or ranking the learning of students at a particular point of time that means the main focus of summative assessment is to rank is to grade the student or to certify the student as pass or fail and to promote him to the next class on the basis of the results of summative assessment so both these formative assessment as well as summative assessment both these types of formative and summative assessments are used in continuous and comprehensive evaluation and this formative assessment and summative assessment is not only carried out in scholastic areas but these are also employed in co scholastic areas to know the performance of the students in different co curricular activities or co scholastic areas just like life skills information and communication technology attitudes and values participation in health and physical education related activities participation in performing and visual arts related activities work education related activities all these are taken into consideration in continuous and comprehensive evaluation and for that both formative as well as summative assessments are employed by the teacher so about which we have already discussed in detail in the previous lessons now what formative assessment tools are available with you as a teacher in order to assess the students on a continual basis on a regular basis at small intervals 
what tools you can use to assess the performance of the students in different scholastic areas or in co-scholastic areas. You can see on the screen that different formative assessment tools which are available with us as a teacher include questions, observation, schedule, interviews, checklist, rating scale, anecdotal records, document analysis, tests and inventories and portfolio analysis. All these are the tools which a teacher can use to assess the student's knowledge and understanding in scholastic areas. That means you can use questions, you can use checklist, you can use tests, you can use observation of the students in different subjects. You can assign questions to the students to know their knowledge or understanding in a particular subject, just like in mathematics. You can assign certain questions. You can take an achievement test of the student to know what is their achievement level in a particular subject. Similarly, you can make use of a rating scale to know the attitude of students towards the school or towards the studies. So, rating scale can be used. Then you can take the interviews of the students or the peer groups or the parents, consult the parents regarding the child's activities, in what type of activities he is more interested and what type of activities he tries to avoid. For that you can make use of interview. So interview is a tool which can help you in determining the interests of the student. Interest inventories can be used by you as a teacher to know in what particular areas the students are more interested, a particular student is more interested. Then observation is a tool available with you as a teacher. You can observe the student's performance in different activities, either within the school, in the school campus, or if you are a local resident, then you can also observe the student in the village, how they are behaving with their elders, in what type of activities they are involved, whether there is indulgence of certain children in certain non-desirable activities, and accordingly, on the basis of your observation, you can take the curative measures. You can improve upon the habits of those students. So formative assessment tools include questions, observation, schedule, checklist, anecdotal records, tests and inventories, observation, interviews, rating scale, document analysis and portfolio analysis. A brief detail of these will be discussed, will be presented to you in the last part of this lesson. Now we will come to know about formative assessment techniques which are available with us as a teacher. What formative assessment techniques are available with us which can be used by a teacher assess the students on a continual and on a regular basis. You can see on the screen, the formative assessment techniques are examination, quizzes and competitions, group discussions, experiments and research, assignments, projects, debates and club activities. So these are the formative assessment techniques. These are the techniques which you can use during the teaching learning process or during the activities which are organized in the schools at different points of time. You can take the examination of the student. You can organize the unit examination or unit testing. You can have monthly examination. You can have half yearly examination or quarterly examination.
then annual examination. So this is a technique to assess the knowledge and understanding that after a particular period of time or after the completion of a particular unit, what knowledge and understanding or what abilities or competencies have been developed among the students. For that examination is a technique which is available with you. And you can use this at small intervals or at certain particular point of time. You can give assignments to the students to know their knowledge or understanding or their explanation skills. So assignments can be a technique to assess the knowledge, understanding or the application ability of the students. The quizzes or the competitions, debate competitions, declamation contests can be organized in the schools. And through these quizzes, through these debate competitions, through these declamation contests, you can assess the performance of the students. You can not only observe the confidence level of the students, you can not only observe the expression of ability of the students, but with the help of such quizzes, such competitions, you can also assess the knowledge, the understanding of the students. Then group discussion, it is also a technique which can be used by you as a teacher to assess the knowledge and to assess the social skills even among the students. To what extent a student is able to accept the ideas of other individuals? How to present your view in a logical manner, in a rational manner? These skills, whether possessed by the students or not, can be observed by organizing group discussions. Then, the projects can be assigned through which the cooperation ability or how to cooperate with others, how to work in a collaborative manner. These skills, these abilities can be assessed by you by assigning group projects. How they come to know or how they come to help each other. This may be a technique that can be used by you depending on the nature of the content. It is not necessary that all these techniques are applicable in all type of subject areas or all type of content matter. It is up to you as a teacher to decide that which particular technique will be more beneficial, will be more advantageous through which you can assess the knowledge, the abilities, the skills, the values, the attitudes of the students. Then club activities, as a teacher and or as a headmaster or as a head of the school, you can go for establishment of different clubs just like environmental awareness club, just like science club, mathematics club. These type of small clubs should be established in the school. And these clubs should be assigned with certain activities and these activities develop among the students the organization and leadership abilities. So how a teacher or how a student can perform in different club activities that is to be assessed by you as a teacher. So these are the formative assessment techniques which include examination, assignments, quizzes and competition, projects, group discussions, debates, declamations and club related activities. So as a teacher you can make use of these assessment techniques while carrying out the formative evaluation on a continual basis. Now we have discussed about the formative assessment tools and techniques. Now what are the summative assessment tools and techniques? Although the formative assessment tools and techniques can be used, can be employed in summative assessment. But there are certain specific particular type of tools which are meant for summative assessment. As you know learners that summative assessment is mostly end term in nature and 
the performance of the students in summative assessment is assessed with the help of written tests or with the help of written examinations or with the help of practical activities in subjects like sciences. So, in case of summative assessment, what type of tests can be used? These include objective type tests. Objective type tests means those written or paper pencil type tests which include the questions like multiple choice questions, fill in the blanks or completion type questions, matching type questions, true false type questions and analogy type questions. So, these are the objective type questions which have only one correct answer. So, in summative assessment, we can use objective type test to assess the knowledge, the understanding of the students. Then, in summative assessment, short answer type items can also be used by you as a teacher to assess the knowledge and understanding of the students. These short answer type may be of one or two, write your answer in one or two sentences. Such type of questions are short answer type questions or write your answer in 50 words. That is a short answer type question. So, these are also the part of summative assessment uh, which is mainly written in nature and summative assessment also includes long answer or essay type items through which we try to assess the expression ability. To what extent a student is able to express his knowledge and understanding about particular content? These questions are the part of summative assessment. So, learners, summative assessment includes both the procedures which are or the tools and techniques which are used for formative assessment as well as objective type test, short answer type questions or long answer type questions are also included in summative assessment and this summative assessment is mostly written in nature and in certain areas, in certain subjects, it has some practical part just like in science subjects. So, these are the summative assessment tools available with us. Now, what assessment tools and techniques? Let us have a glimpse on those. You can see on the screen what we mean by questions. These are the assessment. Questions are the commonly applied assessment tool for finding out what children know, think, imagine and feel. That means in order to assess the knowledge of the students, questions are the best media. A teacher in the course of teaching comes to know of learning difficulties in children by asking question. You can find out that difficulties of the students by asking questions from them where they have understood and where they have not understood about the content matter. They are primarily used in examination. When you take examination of the students, you generally use question as a tool. Then another tool is observation, collecting information about a child, his behavior or her behavior in natural settings and in and outside the class through observation. That means you try to collect information or data about the child behavior in natural circumstances, how he is behaving in a playground, well, how he is behaving with his peer. So that is observation. Other information which can be gathered through planned and purposeful observation of students during activities and tasks. You can observe the students during different group related activities. Suppose you have assigned a project to the students. Now, how those students are cooperating with each other to reach to the goal of that project? You can observe the behavior, how the students are behaving with each other, whether they are cooperating or whether they are, there are certain uh, disagreement in the group. So, observation can be a tool. Then, assignments. Assignments, it is a task to be done as classwork or homework that can be open-ended or structured based 
on a theme context outside textbooks means assignments may be related to the textbook or it may be related to the outside content related to the life situations so such type of work or the assignments are allotted to the students either as a class work or as homework and through visit to certain areas through visiting the literature through visiting or through studying different books or newspaper the students try to prepare those assignments and as a result of those assignment you can assess the knowledge and understanding of those students then checklist is another tool which can be employed by you as a teacher as a formative assessment tool checklist can be used for the purpose of assessment what is checklist it is usable where answer is either in yes or no showing presence or absence of a trait that means whether the student possesses this thing possesses knowledge about this whether the student possesses confidence to present his content matter in front of the class yes no so this is checklist through which the child's behavioral characteristics can be identified or can be checked whether certain type of behavioral characteristics are possessed by the particular child or not for that checklist can be used then anecdotal records anecdotal record is a report of descriptive accounts of significant impactful episodes or occurrences at specific time or in specific duration of life of an individual these anecdotal records are actually the accounts of the happenings of certain situations or happenings in one's life what has happened in one's life these incidences or these anecdotes can tell you about the child's growth what the problem he has faced or how he has reached to this level these all can be studied through the anecdotal records if you are having the description of those events or the happenings which has happened in the life of that particular child this can tell you about the family background of the child which is very helpful in knowing why a particular student is lagging whether he is getting support in the home or not what are the reasons so anecdotal records are important in that manner then aptitude test is a tool which can be used for formative assessment it is a test to discover and measure the potential of an individual for specific abilities and skills such as music science medicine teaching graphic and arts that means in which particular area in which particular aspect the student is having specific abilities or skills so that help you can help you to nurture or nourish those special abilities and the student can move ahead or reach to the topmost level in that particular area so for that aptitude test can be used by you for the students rating scales as we have already discussed the in order to assess the attitude of the students towards stu the peer group the teachers the school the studies all this is possible through rating scale what type of social values are possessed by the students what type of moral values are possessed by the students in such cases rating scales can be helpful self reporting technique this is a technique which is used to find out the response of the respondent to question concerning their characteristics or behavior students are required to express their likes dislikes fears hopes ideas about specific behavioral aspects that means as a teacher you can ask the students to tell about their likes what they like in which area they are more interested what in which subject they feel more comfortable or which subject 
fears them most. All this can be possible through self-reporting techniques and on the basis of that self-reporting by the students, you can assess that in which area the student needs more help, where he requires assistance, where he requires academic and personal support from your side. So self-reporting technique is a tool that can be used by you for assessment to, Im to improve learning among the students. Then portfolio is the portfolio is another technique, which is the collection of evidences of student work over a long period of time. Student, what student has done right from first class to fifth class. All the details about his performance in different areas that is compiled and that is known as portfolio. And on the basis of that you can assess or you can have an idea about the student's interests, student's abilities, student's competencies. Then prognostic test. This test is meant for foretelling or predicting or forecasting to predict the student's ability or readiness to undertake the study or a learning task or skill, just like you have heard about pre-medical entrance test. On the basis of that test, we can assess that if a child is topper in pre-medical entrance test, he will become a good doctor. That is a prognostic test. That pre-medical entrance test is a prognostic test. Then project is another tool or technique which is available with us that can be used by the teacher to assess the students. What is a project? A project is a task given over a period of time and generally involves collection and analysis of data. It is useful in theme-based learning. You can assign projects to the students regarding how the prices are rising in the market through, throughout one month. So the students will collect information from the market and prepare a report. That is a project. So this can be used and on the basis of that you can assess the students. Then quizzes and competitions can be organized by the teacher through which the knowledge of the students, their understanding can be assessed by you. Then documentary analysis. It is also a technique to assess the students and on the basis of the students assignments, students projects or the students publications or writings can be used for assessing their performance in different subjects. This technique, documentary analysis is also used to evaluate answers to essay type questions. So these are different techniques or tools which are available with us as a teacher to assess the student on a continual, on a regular basis and in different areas in a comprehensive manner. But it depends on the nature of the content matter that which type of tool or technique is to be used. All the techniques are not applicable to all type of content matter or subject. This must be kept into consideration by us. So what we have learned in today's lesson? I hope that you must have understood about these concepts. We first discussed about the continuous and comprehensive evaluation. Then we will had an overview about the formative and summative assessment. Then we discussed about the formative assessment tools. Then we learned about the formative assessment techniques and summative assessment tools. And in the last part of today's discussion, we made a brief description about various ass assessment tools and techniques. I hope you have understood about all these tools and techniques related to formative and summative assessment or continuous and comprehensive evaluation. Thank you. Have a nice day.